all seen these mind-blowing examples of text-to-video content made by the Sora model from OpenAI. The, the astronaut wearing the knit helmet, the lady walking through Tokyo, the puppies playing in the snow, all of them created with nothing more than words. Simple text prompt. No cameras, no lighting, no actors, no crew, not even CGI animators or special effects. Just type in what you want to see and boom, perfectly realistic video. Almost. OpenAI actually went out of their way to show that their model is not perfect, yet they intentionally show how it gets confused with stuff like multiple dogs that morph into each other or the, uh, the concept of object permanence. But all of that's going to get better. This is the future. And old Hollywood is on notice. You, you might have seen that actor-producer mogul Tyler Perry saw these Sora video examples, and he immediately stopped all work on a planned $800 million expansion to his production complex. I mean, why would he need 12 new sound stages if the future doesn't need a place to film? Uh, and our cameras are going to be considered antiques soon. We've been digging through all the potential winners and losers from this new tech and which investable companies will be affected. Today on Dumb Money, we're going to reveal our biggest bet on Sora AI. This is Dumb Money Live. Hey there, Dave here, along with Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. Welcome to Dumb Money Live. Quick reminder to let the uh, AI know that you're watching this morning. Smash the like button, like the smash button. Chris, Jordan, good morning. I, I, I know that we've been talking about this, and we haven't yet done a show on it, but the examples we saw from Sora were just so mind-blowing that, you know, immediately I wanted to buy more in NVIDIA stock, but we looked at NVIDIA today, right? What else is going to be affected? What other companies are going to be winners and losers in this new post-Sora world? Dude, Dave, uh, kind of like when we first saw ChatGPT and you were like out of the country and like unreachable that week, but me and Jordan spent a lot of time hanging out that week, kind of figuring out where the play was. Um I feel that I felt that same way when the Sora video was introduced, right? Like with Jordan wasn't when that when that came out, I was like, this is another level. This 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 shift, this change or improvement where I would say like jump in technological capability of these AI generative models for video. It was such a big leap that I knew for sure that there was some big opportunity that was adjacent to it that we'd have to kind of figure out like a puzzle. And I've been thinking about it every hour of every day since I saw that first story. Was that a week ago now, Dave? Yeah, it was, like week, I, yeah, it was, it was, was it last week. It seems, seems like forever ago. I mean, I've yeah. already seen all the videos of people talking about what the technology is and how it works. But I haven't really seen anyone talk about what industries it's going to disrupt other than drone operators and camera operators and animators and kind of the obvious things like it's oh, oh. it's you're right yeah, you're so right obvious things though th there's no like real good at least large public play on any of these there's a handful of like from what i've seen chris chris hopefully proves me wrong but um there's a handful of like over you know over the counter companies that uh you know pink sheet type stocks that you could you know mess yeah. with but I think of this as bigger than just changing the workforce. I see this as creating the concept of entirely new forms of entertainment. And Chris, I think I think we were talking about this on the phone the other day. Uh, when when I think of like what the capabilities are, is it's like can can you? We've talked about this. If you loaded in your favorite sitcom from the past. Could you not have generative video recreate a new script, a new, a, the same characters, insert yourself into the cast? I mean, there just seems to be a potential for an entirely new form of entertainment here. Yeah, not yet, right? So, um, but I think those are the types of things that would be coming. Those are the types of things that they'll put in. Right now, I'm pretty sure um, your inputs are like text and they are pictures. Um, but it is true multimodal. So I think you will see, you know, video inputs in allowing you to, you know, interpolate from, you know, a video. Now the downside being, and this is where, you know, maybe you guys can help me out a lot, but I don't think it's just going to generate an entire show. 
And so the way I'm thinking about it is that you're going to, you still need somebody to create a script, create scenes. Do you? And then. Doesn't chat GPT yes, write a perfect script? this is script? what I'm saying. So uh, this is, don't make your weird face if you want to, but this is what, this is how I envision it happening is that <laughs> at least in the beginning that you are going to say, okay, well, this is the story that I want to tell this. These are the scenes that I want. And then this thing, you could, you could film portions of it of what you're trying to do um, and have this capture the style and then create B-roll, create, you know, secondary scenes. I don't see this, at least in the beginning, as the primary um, content creation platform. I see it as an augment to to existing pipelines and existing ways of doing things. Okay. I think the okay. way we've seen it today, the 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 examples that they've put out and where we might be in a year from now is you're right. It's perfect at, at creating B-roll for yeah. news, like fake news stories or for YouTube videos. Content creators don't need to go out and film something. They can just type in the B-roll. But I see the future, fast forward five years, 10 years, the 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 concept of like, hyper realistic video games went from like being these blocky two-dimensional pac-man style games to it looks like you're watching a movie just imagine all of the entertainment content being able to write itself i i, I see it being able to write itself i see it <laughs> oh, being able yeah, to but that's where i disagree because style. these but that that's where i think you have to look at what the strength is of the ai um in that especially when you think of content creation and we look at what ChatGPT does, and ChatGPT's had some time to bake out, and it's going to continue to get better. But it's it doesn't create novelty; it interpolates and it compresses what it knows about the internet. And so it's got biases, but it can't create anything new or novel. Um, uh, okay, so for, first of all, fine. The novelty the that one... it's going to create, you have to suggest that novelty to create. Okay, let, let's have the fun conversation first, and then the second half of the episode, we'll get into the meat of the trade uh, of yeah. like what trade. Because I do have a trade, and I just want everyone who's watching right now to know that we are going to get into the trade. But since you started here, because I love this conversation too, Jordan, yeah. you're partially right. I think in early days, the biggest beneficiaries of this will be humans who are both highly creative and technolo technologically capable to adopt these new tools and apply these tools to their create creativity to produce better content more quickly and more efficiently than we've ever seen in the history of humankind. And I actually feel that the next five years, we're going to see amazing content that will originate and be orchestrated by highly creative humans, okay? And they might not be mm -hmm. the same humans yeah. that currently work in Hollywood. They might be people that are even more creative that have never had the tools to be able to express their creativity in 1080 or 4K short form or even long form expression through these shows and movies that individuals the next five years, I don't think it's gonna be 10 years, Dave, will be able to actually produce out of their bedroom just with the ideas that they have in their highly creative heads, okay? Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I, I wanna say something about this in that this is, so to me, this is akin to like, you know, two decades ago when you had software companies and uh, tech companies being started out of basements or out of garages because all of a sudden the technology was available and it became less expensive to be able to do these things as an individual. And I think that, Chris, you're right in that what this does is it gives, you know, and we're seeing it right now also with developers. So developers can get an AI tool and it makes them 10 times more productive. And I think it's the same thing with this in that you get somebody that's creative and now you've given them a tool to where they can compete um, without having to make these huge investments in, you know, casts and, you know, all of these different things you have to do that um, I, I think you're onto something there. I think that's right, that it opens up opportunities to people. 
Jordan, a big part of your personal success in your career building out companies for yourself and for us, thank you, um, what had to do with AWS cloud computing enabled you as a single individual to build companies, uh, tech companies that before 10 years earlier would have taken insane amounts of capital and, and human labor, developer labor that you would just do yourself. Uh, which is, you know, for people that know us and the companies we started together, Jordan was the guy building all that stuff. So, but that was cloud computing during your day. And now the tools that are available to, and I don't want to, I want to take this beyond program because today's episode is all about Sora, this, this video generation. It's really about the next generation of creativity and energy. I think it's a perfect analogy for what happened 20 years ago with Tech companies, I think, is what is kind of the revolution that could happen moving forward with creative individuals um, for long I, and short term. But I think before we get into the investment, the but I do think you're somewhat right, Jordan. But also, Dave, I think you're right because in time, especially as we approach AGI, in time. I can tell you that there are no fully original ideas, even in our head as humans. 99% of what we create is built upon what others have created. And so, you know, the, the concept of generative AI uh, in all these formats, I think we will be shocked with just a little bit of input from an outside source, how it will be able to create things that are fresh and new the same way humans have, maybe not as well. Uh, in the early days, but I think they will be able to do great work. But but that's going to get to my investment thesis later because this all this is all going to come full circle by the end of this episode. Um, I think it's important for people that are watching right now because we're talking about Sora. I know people have seen the videos. I think it's important for people to understand how this works. This is all based on a concept called kind of it's diffusion. It's 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 AI diffusion, and what's happening here is that these these renderings these videos these images uh, the the technology is basically adding a lot of noise to them right tremendous amount of noise just just noise on top of images just junk basically and then it starts the process of removing that noise right to get back to the original image or in this case eventually a video and what it's training itself to do is disassemble visual images and then reassemble those images in this case in full 1080 video um it, 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 in a way where it takes it down to the <laughs> like the, the the very smallest piece and it just understands how to take those things apart and putting them back together i know it's a very simplified way to explain this but there's a lot happening here with diffusion that's the basis of a lot of these ai models and how they're being built out specifically for what we're seeing in sora and sora kind of took a little bit of a quantum leap from what i understand in, in using new types of modeling uh that's essentially it's like the equivalent of kind of putting a turbo booster on your engine to get more yeah out of the processing. I, I'm going to explain it like an idiot would to another idiot, but but what they're basically, do, I'm not going to even go into the terminology for what this is. I can, I have it all in front of me, but basically what they're doing is they're taping, they're taking this exi these existing diffusion models and they're getting more out of like the GPUs and the computer processing, meaningfully more to be yeah, able and, to- And kind of the earlier versions of either text to video or still to turn a still into a moving video still that technology was very very short clips because it's all started to fall apart after five or six seconds right because it didn't know it, it didn't understand what the image was supposed to do the quantum leap here is to be able to do a full 60 second video which you can imagine five years from now is going to be a 60 minute video right you'll be able to you'll be able to have new new stuff created out of thin air but you're right, Chris. This was a quantum leap to basically take take the ability to create a moving image and make it more refined and understood and visually appealing and all of those things. Yeah, and, and if you want to get if if you guys want to like kind of research more deeply, it's diffusion transformers that were kind of like that leap 
that Sora took is they're transitioning over to transform transformers as opposed to UNET. So UNET is kind of what we had been using. And it is theorized at least that that Sora is moving to more of these diffusion transformers, which again is just it's like adding a <laughs> turbo booster to your car engine, right? You're just getting more out of the existing computing power that is already there in the model itself. Um, but I think it's important to like understand what's happening behind the scenes, because if you're looking for how we as investors are going to kind of identify sectors or companies that would benefit from this radical shift that's now happening even from within AI, you have to understand what's changed um, and you have to understand where it's headed. And I've probably now spent at least 30 hours contemplating and deeply thinking about where the opportunity is with this new shift that we've seen in AI over the last week. Um, and I started in the same place that most people would start. Okay, is this benefiting like drone makers and Hollywood and M products? And what type of human skills are going to be needed? And what companies are not going to be around? And what companies will be around? And I looked at every theoretical scenario that would exist. And guys, I have to tell you, if you look at it that way, there aren't really any clean trades other than the obvious, which is at the end of the day, even though they're doing more uh, with, per, with the existing pro processing power, it's still taking more processing power. And NVIDIA at the end of the day, they're still going to benefit. Um, a lot of these high density uh, um, cloud computing centers, they're going to benefit. The whole food chain is going to benefit. But where's the real opportunity? Where's the real opportunity in this? And I almost didn't think I was going to find it. I almost didn't think I was going to find it. But then I came up with a thesis, and I want and I want to explain it to you guys. So I think it's I think it's kind of interesting, and I'm a little excited. You know, when you don't think you're going to find an opportunity, and then you find one, it gets kind By of. By the exciting. way, I do just want to mention that if this becomes the way that people really start producing content the amount of GPUs that it will take to do that. I mean, I would think it would be an order of magnitude more than what we have out in data centers right now. Okay, so Jordan, there's a, the there's a theory that remember when OpenAI, um, you know, when they came out a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and they said, what's his name? Said, I want to raise five to seven trillion dollars. But right, isn't, that for... like the, isn't that the total amount of money that's, out right now like the, like in that like the amount of m2 that's available <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 um it, it it it's it's absolutely it's absolutely crazy sam altman came out and said he wants to raise yeah. five to seven trillion. now here's what's interesting kind of happened right at around the same time as some of these kind of breakthroughs were about to come out and there's a theory well, breakthroughs that were about to come out and by the way at the same time that people are starting to realize that chat gpt it's good. Um, it keeps getting better, but it's not like solving all the problems in the world, right? It's not doing all the, it, it. It's not just like a plug in situation where you can have it basically take over being an attorney like people thought it might be able to. And that's where I think the analogy is. Correct. But 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 what he's what we're what we're seeing now is a bottle. Um, this, this whole episode's about the bottleneck. OK, I'm just putting it right out there. There is a bottleneck here. And the, the bottleneck is now that they're seeing how far and how quickly they can push this diffusion technology, especially utilizing diffusion transformers and how crisp and amazing it is, but it still has issues, lots and lots of issues. So if you look closely, occasionally the legs still get crossed. If you it, like, it's not quite there. Yeah, things and disappear from the background. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, there's you, no object permanence. Is kind of the, yeah. If you understand that. why those issues exist, okay, it's because the training data, as we know, the training data is completely crucial for any AI model, right? But especially for this text to video generation that Sora has come out with, okay, because it directly influences the model, their ability to understand and adapt to this changing and complex environment that is real 
video, right? When we watch movies and TV, okay? Like the, the ability for AI to adapt to that, okay? To the environment, to culture, to linguistic changes that are constantly evolving in every yeah. part of the world, especially now more than ever, to human behavioral nuances, okay? Of the physical world. All right, we're talking about social dynamics. We're talking about facial expressions, body language in real world settings. These are the things that we capture when we go out and write scripts and produce movies and cinematographers and directors and actors. This is why movies today look nothing like movies from 10 years ago or 20 years ago, which look nothing like movies that were made in the 80s, okay? So yes, do we have a tremendous amount of imagery to pull from, photographs to pull from, old movies and old shows, right, to pull from for training data? Yes, we do have that, but it doesn't quite work well enough. We don't only need more, we need a lot more of that. And we need it to be current and more robust. And we need it to continue to feed, okay, the AI infinitely forever. Because that is the only way that we will be able to fully rep replicate, right, beautiful film and movies and content the same way that a human would because humans are not static we we change we evolve daily okay the ai right, so you're talking about some sort of novelty mining right because that's going to be the biggest issue is that these things can't push out any sort of novelty and so you're going to you know you're basically just no matter what you're relying on the past you're relying on the past and you're relying on very limited snippets of the past not often from the human perspective, okay? <laughs> because you're filtering it through these various formats, whether they were photographs that were taken. A lot of this, by the way, a lot of the, a lot of the theories around Sora is that some people are saying that they took it from a gaming engine. I don't necessarily know. I know there's an NVIDIA kind of influencer, someone that from NVIDIA has theorized that. Uh, some people are saying that they simply are taking it from images. Some people are saying they're taking it from gaming footage because a lot of people are looking at some of the footage and is too closely resembles what we see from the Unreal Engine, what the Unreal Engine has produced for various video games. So some people are saying that especially they- Especially like the camera moves, those specific, yes. those specific kind of activities and, and things that you see in the gaming world, these videos are starting to look like that. And we also know that um, that they have OpenAI has like a six year deal with uh, Shutterstock to be able to use their content right. and yeah, build get, that as, yeah. as kind of the basis for modeling what things look like. Because that's basically using, a searchable database of any, images and video yeah. content that has right. metadata attached to it so that if they're ingesting all of that, and, and there are actually some side-by-side -side examples of an actual thing that was on Shutterstock and then the output version that uh, Sora created, uh, presumably based on that. Yeah, and, and, and so I started Shutterstock. We, we talked a little bit about this yesterday um, between all of us. Shutterstock was obviously one of the first places I started, and sure enough, they have a deal with OpenAI, and they touted this seven-figure seven deal. It was so embarrassing. They're touting a seven-figure seven deal figures. in their earnings. <laughs> well, I think I don't know if that's the OpenAI deal, but that was the one they were touting in their earnings transcript that they just had earnings this last week. Um, and it was like, because they're talking about how valuable all their data is now as a pure data play, okay? And how they just signed their first seven. I'm like, the problem is it's just static imagery. It's good. It's good for what we have available right now. It's good. And that's why OpenAI probably is using it for a lot of this stuff. It's a good starting but point for, for a creating a library of, of what things look like. And well, I think it explains a lot of what happens right now, which is just inner image interpolation, right? So you take two images, you interpolate between the two, and that creates the motion. Yeah. But but what's the bottleneck here, the bottleneck here is you need the world's most robust training set that evolves in real time daily for forever. And I think so, Sam uh, let, let me just like I'm I'm I we haven't talked about what your what your play is, but just reading between the lines, you are you gonna say that like TikTok or one of the platforms that people are just 
creating new stuff all day, every day is going to be a, a data source that feeds the algorithm. Okay, so so now you're like you're like 21 hours into my 30 hours of research, and that's where my head was at, right? So so now you're at like okay, TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube even, right? Because we're creating yeah. content every day, insane amounts of content. But let me ask you, what does most of that content look like? It's a podcast with guys like us or some kid in their bedroom, right? It it it's not real world yeah that's what i was gonna say you've got a lot of like close-ups of like you know talking head dudes and stuff like that nobody it, needs that it's not rich it captures some things yeah. and there is some benefit there and i'm sure it's a piece of the puzzle long term yeah but what but if you can tap into like everybody's gold. like photo and video library on their phone now now you're talking but you're also dealing with privacy issues and it's probably biased towards little kids it, and you know parents and kids it's not the gold at the end of the rainbow yeah. and i think sam altman what he he's got you know he's he's obviously smarter than me uh he, he, he he's gone through all of this he he's gone through all of this and i think where he landed is the same place i landed um and he knows that the only way to reach agi it, i think is through having this ultra robust dream uh feedback loop uh training data set that evolves daily okay and he thinks that the only way to do that is to basically create a living digital clone of the world and the only way to create a digital clone of the world uh, i'm going to tell you how you're going to create it in a minute but what he needs what what this will need is five to seven trillion dollars worth of uh, a, a, a chips? Okay, like, like like an investment, an investment of five to seven trillion to build the chips to ultimately process that in perpetuity forever for the next thirty years, right? And so that's why. Hold he on knows one second. If this somehow turns into a pitch for Bitcoin, I'm walking out. It's not. It's not. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. It won't. Okay. So now let me explain. Let me ask you guys. How do you capture that human interaction and those social dynamics, right? How do you capture something that mimics human behaviors and interactions to collect that nuanced data, okay, of all the physical real world dynamics, all those complex scenarios that you cannot easily replicate in any controlled environment? What is the only way to do that? Let me ask you, what is it? Meta's Ray-Ban sunglasses. That would be a way. <laughs> Give those out to everyone be, and just yeah, it, force it, them it, to it, record everything that they see. You're but doing. again, it's going to be biased towards people that can afford the sunglasses, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're free. So, 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 so the important thing is there's not necessarily just one way, but it has to be AI's extension into the physical world. We have to be capturing physical world complex interactions every day in every city in every town in every on every street everywhere all over the world and it has to continue forever okay so it is the extension of ai into the physical world through bots okay and you know where i'm headed for this the, oh my the, gosh you're the, saying that it's robots with cameras and that they're just taking it's, it it's the not it's it it, it, it it's exactly not what he's saying yes it's not just robots with cameras but that is that is where we're going to start with this because you have to have jordan the capture of that training data and it has to be in perpetuity you have to know how a how a door closes in a bakery in france in 2000 and 32 and how that changed from a bakery yeah. door in France in 2022. Okay. The only way you're going to capture that is by constantly having that rich, robust data coming in in every place in the world in real time, yeah, I always think and forever. Is, yeah, isn't maybe, that, are you maybe, confusing a Terminator kind of movie? Because here. I was just, uh, Skynet is the word that came to mind and I just Googled it and I'm pretty sure that that is the fictional artificial neuro network based on a consciousness group of minds of super intelligent systems serving as a force. Uh, yeah. No. I'm pretty no, much no, you no, just no. described the plot to, to Terminator. 
let me finish my journey here with you. Okay, let me finish my okay. journey with you. As we all are aware, and as was just announced to the world today publicly, and we've been involved with for a while, and we can kind of disclose it now. Uh, there was an announcement today for you, all, you, all, you guys that didn't see it. NVIDIA, OpenAI, Microsoft, Jeff Bezos, Samsung, Intel, and a few other of the world's oh, most don't forget, prominent. Don't forget the the biggest uh, investor or the best investor. Dumb money. Dumb don't money. forget us. And, and dumb money. Did, did we make the press release? Money. I, I don't think we made the press release. We didn't make the press release for some. CNBC uh, didn't it cover us. But, and dumb money today. We all hey we, we put in our we you know we put in our fair share. We all <laughs> we all invested six hundred and seventy five million dollars today. Um, we were a tiny part of that into a fifteen month old company that doesn't even have any products, not even in pilot, barely. Okay, in the real world, uh, it's a company called Figure AI. They're a humanoid company, and. Uh, this is one of multiple humanoid investments that we're making both on the private and public market. But why did they do that? Why did those companies value a startup mm -hmm. at $2.6 billion? It's a startup with no startup. products in pilot. For Less than two-year-old startup. Why did they do that? And if you read um, the CEO of NVIDIA's interview this last week that he did, you'll see that he, between the lines, he spoke about the importance of their partnerships with robotics and humanoid companies because he knows that there is no way that NVIDIA is going to hit its numbers in two, three, four, five years unless we populate the earth uh, with bots that are feeding this data back, okay? Getting us closer and closer to this AGI moment. And these bots, these humans. It's almost like the bots. I mean, if they're just walking around, you get you get like the outside shots. You almost need the bots to actually go have a coffee, right? So that they can they get the all, full experience. Jordan, they will be doing everything. They will be eventually no, doing everything. Do, here's no, no. You've gone too far. You're wrong. You could go. Maybe it could go to the cash register, but it's not going to go sit down and have a latte. Jordan, it's you not really going to perspective of like going to okay. the table. Right. The let me table. let me explain. Okay. Will it sit down and have a lottie? Maybe not. But will it walk into a coffee <laughs> shop, order you order your coffee and bring it back to your office all the while recording in a public place 360 right. every So it's gonna be biased towards like, you know, uh, delivery men. Jordan, will it be perfect? No. Will it be exponentially better than a photograph on Shutterfly? Absolutely. Okay. But I don't think it'll be better than if you could work out a deal with every single individual with an iPhone. Okay. Is that, will you, but is your iPhone going to be, you're going to be walking around with your iPhone recording video? No. You're Have not you gonna... seen the world, Chris? Have you been to a beach lately? Have you been anywhere? You've been <laughs> anywhere. People posing. And okay, fine. Maybe, that, and maybe and that's maybe that's what I was doing. Like there are other data entry methods. Uh Dave, there are there are very few data entry uh methods that are in human form interacting, engaging constantly throughout the entire earth on sidewalks and and stores and homes and every single thing that a human does physically i don't know how you're going to get much closer there are other you know what another form of human enga engagement is how about all the automobiles in the world we're kind of getting closer to my thesis now on on the trade yeah yeah sure, uh, yeah but but again you're biased yeah. so those are just biased towards roads and parking lots okay and the, I, then it's point. not the end point it's not the end point. Yeah. It's but I'm it's I, a piece of it. I think it's we I think we know your trade. Yeah. I'm I'm just watching the chat to see if anyone said, Oh, yep, it already came through. I mean, listen, this is the bottleneck, the bottleneck for AI. Ask anybody is going to be training data. It's going to be the training data. 
It's yeah. the bottleneck. Okay. How do you solve the bottleneck? You need to expand the training data to capture nuance, to capture culture, to capture human behavior as it's evolving day in and day out. There are a lot of pieces to that. I'm not saying humanoids are the only piece. It is the critical piece, okay? And I believe that test, and by the way, when we say humanoids, understand something. Humanoids are where we start, not where we end. That's that's phase one of AI's physical extension into the real world because the world was built for humans the last few thousand years. The next few thousand years are not necessarily reliant on humans. So these humanoids will start the first 20 years. They will quickly evolve and expand well beyond the human form. We all know that. But right now, stage one is humanoids because that is where the biggest need in the world is the next 20 years is to somehow fill the human gap. Uh, it's the it's maybe the largest problem we've ever had in the last hundred years that we're coming up on uh, to humanity and humanoids will solve that gap. And all the while they will become the killer training data set for AI to eventually approach AGI. And the value of that is unbeatable. Leavable, and it's not something that people are necessarily going to wake up to <clears throat> next week or next month or in three months. But I did not start this process with a goal to end up with Tesla as as the answer. Believe me, I promise you, I did not want to end this exercise I, with Tesla. And it's exactly all, where I ended up. On. I want to I want to say something about this, but first I have to point out something to Dave. Dave. The audience believes that you look like George Michael today. <laughs> Just so random. That started. Random. That started last what week. What a good compliment! I think that my uh, hair is longer than normal, yeah. and uh, they were saying that uh, that I looked like Wham last week. Uh, so I, I, I Dave, don't know. it's long. I but... beg you to do something for me. I'm begging you now. You, when you get back to Dallas next week, can you please come to my house? And fix my stupid lighting so I'm not so washed out on this. I, what you guys are glowing. You look great. You look tan. I look like I haven't left my closet in 30 years, and I you feel like you're doing this to me. The, the lighting well. is 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 true to life. You haven't left that closet because you just lock yourself in and do research all day and all night. <laughs> and we, there's nothing I can do. I can I can That's, you know turn you your light bulb down me, a little bit. Let, you let me want just me to look to your, bad. Your Tesla thesis though. Because I I am 100% with you on humanoids being the future, humanoids being Tesla's future. I, I just find it hard to make the connection that that is the best and most like direct trade for a Sora AI trade. And I was having a hard oh. time finding one too. I don't have a great trade. I think, yeah, I think, I think the winners here are going to be IP lawyers, which if there was a publicly traded IP lawyer firm over the next decade i think that's yeah. going to do well um yeah. the original production companies that own the rights to things like you know um warner brothers owns friends and sony owns seinfeld and the actors themselves if there was a way to to all these actors who are going to get paid for having their likeness used in future well, that's the thing, is versions we, of things. We already know, but but Hollywood already knows this, and so in, if they were going to produce something, they've already been sued over that in the seventies and eighties. That if you put somebody's likeness in, regardless if you use them or not, you've got to pay them. Um, you know, if they were like an ex, a, a character from a previous show, and you're going to use their backside, but not actually, that you got to pay them. Yeah, and so that's and, and, you know the and same so thing would apply here. There. Any judge would would go along with that. And there's not a trade in the distribution platforms. YouTube, yes, they're they're going to have increased uh, output of people posting stuff. Um, Netflix, yeah. Apple, all the pluses, Paramount Plus, Hulu yeah, Plus. Yeah, I would just think that any of the any of the actual production houses, you could say that you could get some sort of cost savings uh, potentially out of utilizing this technology. Okay, well, and, and, and so here's you know the problem, that, Chris. Here's the problem with your trade. That's not a trade. This is like a two decade deal while they roll out right so it's not a trade because it can't like unless they start unless people start pricing that in right now to sora it Jordan. doesn't exist because they're not going to be on the streets they're not going to be going through the french cafe doors 
for at least a decade. Jordan, no, 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 no. The like market that. is going to figure this out in the next 12 to 18 months. I do believe that we will figure Maybe. it out because I would it's think that going... they would have figured out Tesla right now, but it's for sale today. I mean, you can it, get it for it, sale. exactly, which makes this so great. And I'm not, by the way, we're not financial advisors. We do not provide financial advice. This is just our thoughts. This is what we're doing. Um, and by the way, like, I love that it, it I kind of do like that it ended up being Tesla because it's the only stock that I have that's down still. Like, I, I have this talk with people all the time. At some point, the rotation is going to settle in. I mean, if we, if Tesla were to actually get a catalyst in the next few months, any catalyst at all. Yeah. Dude, dude. I mean, Jordan, I know in the past you've regretted not owning Tesla. This is the time. I mean, you just have to realize that it could get be painful. You could have a painful few months because Elon is so unpredictable right now. The auto yeah, market is. I, so I weird own a little right bit now. right now. I've got I've got my starter position on. I've got a little bit. Yeah, but I will say this: I do believe the market's going to pull forward this concept because if you look at the smartest minds in the world, if you look at the most influential tech CEOs and the most influential people of talking about AI. Here's what's going to happen. Oh, they've already started to hint at this. They've already started to talk about it. Over the next 12 to 18 months, the people that everybody is listening to, they are going to shout this from the rooftops, okay? Because they need the problem to be solved. There's a reason why they invested $700 million into figure AI. There is a reason for that because they need the bots. They need the humanoids for their training data. Do you think they would have placed a $2.6 billion valuation on that company if they didn't want to prop that company up and prop other humanoid companies up? Okay. No, they need it more for themselves. They're greedy. They have self-interest in mind. They don't care about the humanoid company. They care about their training data. That's what they care about. That's why all the world's top tech companies are in, in that round. OK, it's a preview to what's coming the next 12 to 15 months. And I think when they start shouting it from the rooftops, the market is going to wake up to the humanoid trade. Generally, there's not a lot of humanoid companies, there's really only one that's public, Tesla, right, with their optimists. And I do think that a piece of the humanoid story is going to be this training data that is going to be really valuable the same way that people talked about the value of the autonomous driving capture data for something that honestly I knew wouldn't happen for 20 years. Every All the Tesla fanboys thought we'd have autonomous driving by now. I said since day one, autonomous driving is going to take 10 to 15 times longer than anybody thinks it will. Because of regulation alone, forget about the tech, regulation alone, and what's happened 12 years later, here we are, no autonomous driving in the real world because it's not allowed, even if, even if you think it's better than it is. Can you imagine you trying to five, get a program like that through a government agency or like what? 50 government agencies? Are you kidding me? It's insane. It's insane. I always said it. I knew it. And I was correct. But when it comes to bots, physical bots, humanoids, other bots, uh, there will be regulation. It will be less, a lot less, because we're not driving. Well, but I, hey, think about this. So um, I think the biggest, I think Tesla's biggest advantage in humanoid robots is they've got a closed system to be able to test these things. So to where figure AI is going to have to go do deals with XYZ company to put these in their warehouses or their factories or whatever. Tesla has factories. And by the way, they can just put them wherever they want, wherever they think is the most advantageous to collect data, to refine the robots, all of these things. That they, you know. Can, they have can I can I read something to you guys? I normally don't like reading this, but when I I probably ingested a hundred million words of research, but there was something that I read and I just kind of like pasted it word for words, a couple paragraphs. I think it's important enough to share it on this episode. And it kind of relates to everything I've been talking about. And I don't even remember where I pulled it from, but it was from some from a some AI research brief. Um it's talking about the world model, like the world model that I suggested that Sam Altman's probably thinking about. So a world, a world model technology 
that robustly predicts state action state transitions for all states and actions that might be encountered while performing any task in any environment, okay? Such a world model would enable fast online planning using reinforcement learning. To learn such a world model would require data of real world state action transitions, which in turn will require the ability to explore and interact with the real world. Reinforcement learning, the current favorite path forward, requires exploration of the real world to learn how to plan and or the ability to imagine how the world will change when it tries different actions. A world model can predict how the world will change when an agent attempts to perform an action, but world models are best learned through exploration. Yeah. RL algorithms must either have data uh, that covers all state action transitions in advance, or it must generate its own data by interactively exploring the execution environment or simulation. Now, I know that's like a lot of tech talk, but what it's basically saying is the best way to feed that AI is through experimentation in real world interactions. And the yeah. best way to, in my mind right now, to do that is through this bot revolution that is coming through humanoids. That right. I, I think, think the better way to say it is like you have to learn in the real world like a human does, because right now Sora learns through two, the two dimensional world, right? In the two dimensional world, doesn't have object permanence. It doesn't have a lot of these things that you get when you're actually interacting with the world um, on a daily basis. And so I, I think that's kind of the, the succinct way to, to think about this. I, I, agreed. So I, I want to apologize for the, the lengthy journey that I took everyone on here. But, but listen, I feel this is a really important topic. And if you're trying to kind of get ahead of the crowd, get ahead of the street, and all, listen, if you read all the articles on Sora, you watch all the videos, nobody's talking about this. No one's thinking this deep yet, but they will. It will get there. You might have to be a little patient, but it will happen. And and we're we're change, we're radically rebuilding the world from the ground up. It's an AI world. It's happening. It's going to happen over the next couple decades, but quicker than we think, I think. Um, and these are the sort of exercises that you need to take yourself through as an investor to really get ahead of these big, big shifts that we're going to see. And I just feel like no one's appreciating Tesla right now because they're too focused on that crap. I don't want to call it a crappy auto. It's not a crappy auto business. It's just not a half trillion dollar auto business, right? So it's like, People like to rip on Tesla because it's valued at half a half a trillion dollars, and you can make a case that it, the auto business should be valued at maybe a hundred billion. Um, so, how much is the rest of it worth? I don't know, but I'll say it again: if you go to my Twitter at Chris Camillo, you'll see pinned to the top is my 15 tweet thread about how Tesla's Optimus humanoid division should be valued at 10 trillion dollars by the end of 2030. I believe that. For myself don't take it as financial advice but that's why i've started some levered positions in tesla everyone's have you started your lever? yes i started my levered positions i'm starting with uh some call options that are 2025 option expiration options and i think i'm going to continue you know as long as my budget will allow me to add to that position maybe every week maybe every couple weeks uh until i until I'm like meet Kevin and like 70% of my portfolios in Tesla, that will probably never happen, <laughs> but it might, it might. Um, are there so, any, are there any other bot plays on the stock market? Um, that, there's that not, there's another bot. In. Well, okay. So our, one of our very favorites, the one that we're closest with that we invested in a year ago, uh, we just doubled down on and I made the largest investment of my life in a private company that I funded yesterday. And it is a humanoid company. And it's not the one we talked about in this episode. It's another it's a private company, company, figures a private company. Yeah. Uh, are there any public companies though that are uh, far enough along or considered no. close enough to being a bot? Because Tesla, the market doesn't really think of as a bot company. It we will. know it's going to be it a will. bot company. I will in time. It's just Tesla for me. There's no other. You could you could theoretically say that Hyundai, because they own Boston Dynamics, which is a research humanoid company, not a commercial humanoid company. You could theoretically say that they might retool and develop. Yeah, I would, think, I would think Hyundai is 
a legitimate way to look at it. You're right. They would have to totally retool their. But wait, wait, I think wait fine. on that. Wait, wait. That? You could wait till they do that. You could wait on that trade till they do it because they haven't uh, yeah, done totally. it yet. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, te Tesla's the trade for me, Dave. Uh, five minute warning. I have a two thirty. I have to get to, so we have to wrap up. And we need to wrap up anyway. We, we're all we're almost at the fifty minute mark now. We like to keep these things at thirty minutes. So uh, we, I, we did I a lot fixed of my today. background, but I still need to fix my face, Dave. How can, can you fix the make my face tan like yours and Jordan's? Yeah, just, I know you uh, change the color temperature on that front light. Just turn it a little bit warmer. It'll be good. Unless All your right. camera's like on auto or something, and then then we have a whole new if, can of worms. Can, can you just come over next week? Yeah, I'll come home, over, dude. All right. Yeah. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I think that's really all we have to talk about. I, I didn't have a good pure play. Here's how to get into Sora. The closest is Microsoft. You know, they have they have like a 49% stake in OpenAI. So that yeah. that's as close as I could get well, to. A and play. they'll get all of the cloud revenue from the GPU utilization that all of these, um, you know, all of these yeah. movie houses, production I mean, houses will have to use. I kept going down rabbit holes looking for someone who owned a ton of intellectual property that's going to be ingested and, and remixed. You know, like all of these companies, though, like Warner uh, was... <laughs> owned by AT&T and then sold to uh, or merged and became Warner Discovery. And it's just all messy and not like clean, pure play content. Like Sony uh, merged with MGM and owns like 15 million like shows and movies and stuff. But yeah, like that's just messy. It's very like, messy. I, I don't have a good pure play. Microsoft hey. is my mind. But I, 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 I do just, like your Tesla play. I just don't really see it as being a like a Sora data ingestion capture play anytime soon. I, I want to apologize for not getting to comments and also just being lazy on comments on our videos. I'm going to go into our video today after it publishes. If you want, if you have a comment, I'm going to try to get to the comments this time, not on the live video, but once we publish yeah. it. Yes, so you're, I am you're in typing your comments on the uh, on the live chat right now. Wait, YouTube takes a while. Once we once we stop the live stream, it takes a while to like reset and then make it so you can type comments. Chris and I will also go back in and and oh, respond to comments. Also, we cannot end this episode without congratulating the entire dumb money community for what mm -hmm. was, I think, our largest trade of the past year. Celsius Energy. Look at it today, guys. This is not just a me trade. Every single yep. person active in our community, in our Discord group, has been doing research, has been adding value to that trade. I really love you guys. I appreciate it. Days like today are why we do what we do. Um, if you guys they, haven't seen they are up. Celsius. Oh, they're up like 20%. On, on earnings today, they're up 20% just for those who aren't following the trade as closely as us. Uh, so they are up month to date, uh, 57%. And this was uh, something we talked about not long ago in a video uh, called We Just Went All In on This Stock with a yeah. can of Celsius as our um, as our. Highly thumbnail. recommend you go back. We have a lot of new, uh, new subscribers. Go back and watch that episode. And if you're too lazy to watch an episode or you want to just read my tweet thread on Celsius. I retweeted it this morning at Chris Camillo. Dumb Money will probably retweet it. I'm going to get in there and make Dumb Money retweet today, Dave. Uh, so go to the, what's a Dumb Money Twitter, Dave? Dumb Money TV? I think it's at Dumb Money TV. Yeah. By the way, we hit 30,000 subs on Twitter. Dumb, that's pretty cool. All we really do is just throw out our video clips on that twitter account so that was awesome thank you guys well, we also live stream we now live stream and put our replays on there and on twitter x right now we have 38 people watching <laughs> dude we we have like a thousand that's actually, watching that's now. way more than i would have expected right. because we have like a thousand on uh youtube but uh and one person watching us on facebook yeah <laughs> i don't know if that data is accurate or not but um thanks thanks mom um awesome hey guys we love you, but I have a meeting, Dave. I, we got to close this out. Yeah, and that's going to do it for us. We're Dumb Money. We'll see you again next week.